So an update from the Austin 7 Ruby. Today we're going to be changing some brake linings um, on one of the front wheels. We've already done one side, we're going to do the other side today. And uh, we've made a tool to enable getting the springs on and off. Um, we'll show you how this works um, and uh, credit goes to one of the Austin 7 clubs. I'll put a link in the description to um, the web page where they describe this. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, it's just a five mil mold steel, um, about 30 centimeters long. It cost me about a fiver, including postage off of eBay. And uh, yeah, the uh, the website will show you how to use uh, how to make it, and I'll show you how to use it on the uh, on the car. So that's a bit of a game changer. It was a very difficult job getting the springs off when we did the first side. So we had to look for a solution. We knew there was a better way without taking the hub off. Obviously, taking the hub off is um, is one way. Making a tool is another way. So uh, let's give you some information on that. So let's uh, get uh, get the wheel up. Let's get the Austin Seven. Um, back on the road basically uh one of the um brake pads on one of the side the side we've already done in fact one of the brake shoes um was right down there copper sorry brass riveted i think rather than copper anyway they're riveted on and uh, one of our rivets was uh, getting quite shiny on the top so uh, definitely needed some new uh pads so let's uh, let's get the other side done Right then, so we've got the car jacked up. Uh, we've got it on an axle stand, so let's pop the drum off and uh, see what the, de uh, the uh, shoes look like on this side, see if there's much meat left on these ones. So let's, uh, let's get that done. So I've got the uh, three little grub screws, let's pop these out. We've had this off. Not that long ago, so it shouldn't uh, yes, nice and easy. Right, okay, so let's have a look. So yes, yeah, so we can see that we've actually got yeah, quite a low one there actually, isn't there? So uh, definitely needs changing. Obviously, we've had to change the other side, so we're definitely going to change this side. So um, yes, let's get that little tool out and um, and see how easy it is to take these shoes off using the uh, the tool. Right then, so we're going to use this tool here. So basically, it's um, five mil metal rod mold steel so slightly shaped at the end there we've filed off flat there that's so it can go up against the spring a little two mil hole in the end there that's going to go the little spring is going to hook into that i'll show you when i get it off in a minute and basically what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to push this in push the spring off of its lug and then it'll drop away so let's give it a go this is the job that took us ages without the tool we should find it easier with the tool. All right, there we go. So there's one spring off and the bottom spring. Right then, so shoes off. So the lining's on these. Um, uh, this one is the lining we're gonna replace. It's quite a bit left on it still, it feels. Um, it is very close to that rivet there in particular. Um, but it does feel a little bit sort of greasy um, and uh, yeah, so we definitely need to have a good clean up inside the drum. We're certainly going to clean these shoes up and um, the new liners will go on quite nicely. Now, you might have already noticed that the linings we've got, they look a bit different. Um, that's the lining that should be on it and we've got more rivets on ours. So as far as we can tell, someone's drilled extra holes. We're not too sure why. If you know why, let us know in the comments. Um, but uh, yeah, basically, so what we did on the other side is we uh, just used, yeah, basically the four rivets on each one. Uh, this is what comes supplied for an Austin 7 Ruby, 1935 Ruby. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so for some reason, it looks like someone's drilled some extra holes, maybe. Um, you know, if you know why, let us know. So let's get the uh, old ones drilled off then. So is all we've been doing is Bearing in mind that the uh, shoes are aluminium, so we don't break anything. So we've just been using a drill, just to drill through. To get it started. So as you can see, it's incredibly easy to drill. And then we've got a punch there, punching it through. So uh, yeah, let's get those off and um, we'll have a look at the new linings on there. Okay, so we've got the brake shoes cleaned up, a bit of a degreaser. So it's all we're doing now is we're putting the uh, rivet in that end and we're gonna support that on uh, this in the vise and then we're gonna hit it from above. So if you wanna pop that in there, Nassid, show us what we're gonna do. 
There we go, so that holds there quite nicely. Now that's the bit of the rivet we just need to flatten off. And to do that, we've simply got a, uh, a rod and a hammer. And we're gonna flatten that from above, keeping everything as uh, vertical as we can. We don't break the uh, brake pad, for example. So uh, let's give that a little quick demonstration and then we'll get them done. So just got that on there and a hammer, everything nice and straight. So that starts the process two or three more bangs like that and that will be flattened over enough so let's get them all done and then we can get these shoes back on the car right then so we've got the linings on the shoes and uh, they're reasonably well riveted on there the method we used um, if you know of a better way do let us know um, you know we are just making this up as we go along um, but it works it seems to work uh, it works really well for our clutch as well so how are we going to arrange these let's come and have a look this is how the um, shoes will be inside the drum so rotate at the top there you've got the cam at the bottom forces them apart puts the brakes on so is what we're going to do is we are going to secure this spring at the top here with an elastic band because the hub is going to be in the way of all this isn't it so let's just pop that on there so there we go so we're going to put it on the car with that one secured up there so then is what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool to fix the bottom one so we're going to carry it over to the car with the spring already loaded in there i sure i got it the right way around looks like i have so yes yeah, so the tool onto there so what we're going to do is pop that one on as simple as that it won't go quite as easy as that and then the hub's going to be right in the way so we're going to be fiddling around and last time I had to use a screwdriver to sort of like go in behind there to bring it out a bit. But essentially then we're going to use the tool on there and pop that one over, put the drum on and, um, and it'll all go back together um, quite nicely. So let's, let's give that a go. Right, okay, so because our brakes have been adjusted, they've been using these. We've actually um, loosened off the adjuster at the very back, which is what you're kind of meant to be using. So I'm going to take this off because that will give us more flex and allow us, there we go, to turn the brakes pretty much, yeah, that's fully brake off at the moment. So it's got a little bit of strength now to do. Now, same as the other side, this cable um, has no doubt been stretched um, by this implement here, um, but it's not frayed, don't feel too bad. So um, we will, probably replace these cables at some point but uh, not today um, at least that's given us enough to get this cam at the bottom here to go to the there we go it's pretty much the fully break off position so um, we've got new pads the other side as well we took this little thing off the other side so uh, yeah that should allow us to put the uh, the pads back on let's give it a go all right then so we've got the tool on the bottom spring top spring is held with that elastic band so fingers crossed there we go so it's the bottom one on and just a case of finding the top one which has gone out of sight Right, and then we just got to do this top one and <laughs> fiddly. <sighs> okay, right. There we go. So we're now in place. Uh, we've got an elastic band, which needs to come off. And then, yeah, we are good. Right, brake's ready we should now be able to get this back over. So I've got the brakes fully off. Bit tight. Go, okay, these will take some bedding in. Right, 
there we go. That feels pretty tight. Right then, so it's all back together. We've just reversed it up the driveway. We had to slacken the, um, the adjuster off just a bit because the brakes did feel a little bit tight, but it feels like it's going to move quite nicely now. So let's jump in and see what it drives like. So the brake adjuster is fully, fully off at the moment. Right then, we'll get around the corner and then we'll test the brakes, make sure they're working. Right then, so, no one behind us. Yep. Even stopped in a straight line. Okay, so that appears to be a success. The brakes were pulling to one side where we had the brake pads rubbing on the rivet. Right then, so that seems like a success. The car's stopping in a straight line. That's what's caused us to do this. The car was uh, pulling to the right every time we stopped because the uh, the pads on the uh, the left were on uh, the rivets, which was obviously no good. So, stopping in the straight line again, I'd call that a success. Uh, need a little bit of bedding in, obviously. That'll take a bit of time um, and effort, but we'll get embedded in and uh, we'll go out for a drive soon. <laughs> 